All right, my friend, we are up. Andre Govorov, how are you doing, man? I'm just great. I, just, I finished my heavy practice today. It was a lactate practice, and I'm enjoying to talk to you, man. I'm enjoying to talk to you. Now, listen, you, you were in the news recently, kind of made a little comeback swim. Um, talk to me about where you were and what you did. Oh, it's a kind of long story, you know? Like, when you're on the top of the world and just dropping it just because of many circumstances like surgery and covid and many other things happening in your life is quite tough to sustain and being professional athlete you know and i believe that in these moments you really understand why you're living you know like what does the sport means to you and what is the high performance means to you so if it's just explaining what happened after the rio olympics and when i chased the goal there and i missed it for just mistake in the final I was still training for freestyle, you know, my butterflies mm. was never a goal because butterfly is what I have since I born. It's nothing that I need to work on. I mm. just need to be athletic for that. I need just to be explosive and it's going to be there. But my shoulder was really completely like exhausted and uh, 2017, 18, wouldn't be possible to train any freestyle practice. Every time I sprint, I couldn't move my arm the next day. Mm. And Adi, just the time we trained with Adi, and he said, okay, man, it's time. It's time to just break war, war records and butterfly. And I said, yeah, it was one of my targets. You know, I dreamed about that. I, but that time I really recognized that is the time. Because my butterfly is never really affected by the shoulder pain. Mm. But still we trained uh freestyle we we'll train freestyle and but he said look in four weeks you're gonna break the war record it was in germany that time in frankfurt and i said man i don't believe you because in that moment that moment i was exhausted mentally physically i couldn't move my arm much mm -hmm. and even sometimes i just was going to the market buying some sweets some chips some like <laughs> terrible stuff and eating like a lot of them and he's saying me that words like four weeks and your war record folder said no way man it's gonna happen and then we came to Mara Nostrum and I started to feel oh that's coming something is coming out like mm. uh, swim was 22.5 freestyle and like 22.9 uh in the prelims I swam uh 50 butterfly and I just said okay we're gonna skip all the freestyle for this season and just let's focus on 50 butterfly and and then the story starts you know i start to feel every meeting better and better and i felt that i can do more and i know some secrets in butterfly how to uh, swim faster the 50 really swim because you know i'm not a great starter i don't have any underwater since i kid uh, the coaches say me swim faster not do any underwaters and this probably was a mistake that i'm still struggling right now and the first 15 meters so then was this magic 50 butterfly when uh, you was in the video you cheered more yeah. than anyone else uh, <laughs> i still uh, sometimes i watch that video in, enjoying and i hear that you just did go 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 and you <laughs> enjoyed that race as well and i appreciate for that honestly it's uh, you're part of that story you know and, yeah mm -hmm. and since that uh i see i think we achieved some something big together with adi and um, the olympics is it was the next goal uh, olympics tokyo but my freestyle wasn't there. In uh, 2019 in Korea, I swam 22.9 and I couldn't move my arm again. And uh, I swam the same time in butterfly, you know. And the decision was to make the surgery because, I, you know, I don't like to talk it loud like that time because, you know, it, it's kind of a weakness. I don't want right. to show that I couldn't make the Olympics or something. But 2019, uh, Israel, I'm going to make a surgery. I'm saying to the doctors, guys, I'll just, I need to train in three, four months tops like do better best you can and you know in ukraine we have some this difficulty thing that nobody gonna pay you for this surgery it's like we don't have the insurance at all so this the athletes don't have any kind of insurance and i paid the surgery from my pocket just to be sure that I, it's gonna get done well and it was good like i can tell you it was a good decision to make the surgery at that moment it relieved my brain for a bit Mm. And, and then in three months, I started to do the parachute swim. So Three, three months after surgery, you're doing parachutes? Yeah, in, <laughs> in late August, I've, I made the surgery. And 
already in November, I've made my first parachute set. But I tell you, man, it was a big mistake. I mean, I didn't, I didn't make it worse, but you, 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 you just can't do max. You like you, it was a big mistake. No shit, I could have told you that, man. No, like it wasn't forced by someone. It was forced by myself. You know? Okay. okay. It, it, like everyone say, man, he just calm. Like let let your just arm rest. And I said, man, right. Olymp Olympics coming. Like how I, I've been uh, chasing for the Golden Olympics. How could I not chasing again, right? Okay. And then uh, it couldn't happen. You know, every practice I do, I know that I'm slower than before. Every practice I do the gym, I know that I'm weaker than before. And then, you know, between coach and athletes and uh, an athlete that just starts to be uh, like, like tight points that we start to be freaking out of each other. Mm -hmm. and it's not helping at all mm -hmm. and in that moment covid starts and imagine me feeling that big relief that one more year i'm gonna have for preparation just one more year for like recovery because i was happy for covid starts honestly and but instead of keep training instead of uh like was april the covid like the pandemic starts uh april right april 19 yeah yep uh, april 20 april, april 20, 20 yeah 20, 20. Mm -hmm. and uh it was my trials and that time i swam 22 something four you know i i was not close to the olympic cut because i still would should make the olympic cut and i, I decided just okay i just want to get some rest and uh first the pools was closed second uh, the pandemic starts that you can't travel. Uh, the Adi that time that my coach uh, couldn't be in Ukraine. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to take some months off for um, recover because I could have a year. But this month off was not month off, was six months I didn't swim. Because many reasons. Uh, I got some promo proposal for uh, high politi politics in my country. Mm -hmm. uh and i just say okay i'm gonna try politics just because it's my next step like i see me as a next stage in my future as a politician in my country mm -hmm. i have po political education i have master's degree and i also have uh, i started the work for phd in my university uh, the topic oh. is uh sponsorships and sport in post-soviet union countries wow. as you know we moved from communism to capitalism and not nobody was thinking what kind of relationships between business and sport could make like uh, and that mm -hmm. was the, because it was a big issue for me and because uh, nobody wants to sponsor in my country it's not about me it's about everyone so or someone just supports without any relationships because sponsorship that you need to give some value in the like commercial value or something and mm. but in that moment the director of the university died and i just quit with phd because it was uh, big work together and the politics man is dirty thing it's just it's not something that you need to, you can do a part-time you just need to be like 100 percent in and uh, this level of work out of the swim make me think that look finish your goals first like my goal is not done yet my goal is uh swim freestyle as fast as i can and i know that 21 46 that was in the Rio Olympics is, wasn't my best. I knew we analyzed the races and I could be much faster in that race. And I still want to enjoy high performance swimming. And in that moment, I just realized, okay, I want to go back to swimming and focus 100% there. And when we met with Ari in that moment, it was um, November. November in Turkey, we met the first time after the pandemic starts allowed us to travel hmm. i think ari was already not ready in this my opinion I, I, like we had a long talk at the time but he was not ready to coach me anymore for many reasons for covid for him missing his family and i don't know exactly the reasons honestly if it was a long time ago already a year and we stopped training together and at that moment i had no option to go anywhere else first is again it's covid a pandemic i even called you right at that time yeah yeah we spoke during that time yeah and was no chance that i could come to, to you because 
like that time you the you, you swam in the backyard pool, right? California was locked down. Yeah, we were swimming in uh, yeah, basically a backyard pool. Yeah, uh, and um, I just decided, okay, I'm just gonna try to do my own. But in that time, the assistant coach, the Lucas Brandmeier, that I, I've met him in Tenerife a long time ago, and he was an assisting coach for recovery of my shoulder. I called him and said, man, I want to just do the preparation with you together on my own because I have no options now. And he came to Ukraine and we started to do just what we know, you know, just uh, heavy lifting gym, the like strength, strength transition to the power, uh, power to the speed. And that was the work. But unfortunately, unfortunately it was not enough because uh, after six months off, we needed to First, so I compete compete at ISL. So I did two months work after six months off, and honestly, I got close to my personal best in short course. It was oh, you uh, you did compete ISL? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, and that, that was uh, honestly I surprised on that because uh, I swam twenty two five fifty fly there short course, mm. and twenty one forty seven fifty freestyle, and even once under twenty one in a practice, and that was my best swim of the year at that time. Mm. That's why they they allowed me to swim 50 freestyle because I was on on the 50 freestyle list. But then in the competition doesn't felt well anymore because just two months of work not allowed me to swim consistently quick. Right. And and then we started to prepare the Olympic year. But again, you know, six months off, it's it's a hard time uh, to get back. And also in this period, I had some depressions. So sometimes I just couldn't go to the practice because of reason that my coach is not in the country or I'm trying to reach Tenerife as a camp, but I'm Ukrainian. I'm not part of the EU. Like I don't have a EU passport. Mm. They hold me in airport seven days. And seven I, days seven in the days, airport. Yeah. In the airport, just because they couldn't say me. No, I, it was terrible. Uh, like first time they refused me to go. I was in Ukraine. They refused me to go through Czech. I stayed in Kiev like one more day. Then I decided to buy the ticket because I paid already. I paid the hotel in Tenerife. I paid the center, like I prepaid everything. And then I go through Turkey. So I go in Istanbul and then I'm just about to board. And they say, oh, we need to clarify, like check if you can go, if you can go through. And that time was no vaccines yet. I had my PCR test done, but they say, oh, we need to wait that the officials going to say if they're going to allow you to come or not. So I wait one day, two, three, four, five days, and then they say me no. And then I needed to wait another two days to buy the ticket back. Nobody, like no refunds, nothing. Mm-hmm. Even Tenerife, the guys who are paid the apartment, they're being they just like they say, okay, we're not going to pay you back. Like they took advantage of the situation. Wow. And you must have lost a lot of money. Yeah. I think around 4,000 that moment I lost. Wow. Uh, but that's mostly for my mental state mm. then i went back home and i didn't train a week because i just didn't want to do anything else and it is and then other like i go my trials i go to my trials again 22 one or 22 two is like not close enough what i wanted to and mm. i'm just again two weeks off i'm just decided to take two weeks off and it was like four or five times during the preparation that I just freaked out and I had no coach that just could grab me out and just put me on the water bed. Um, because just he wasn't there. My assistant coach was somewhere else because they not allowed him to go to Ukraine in that moment. So it's just tough, tough life in that moment. And I decided in one, like one day I just thought, Okay, whatever is gonna happen, I'm just gonna compete. I went to all Mara Nostrums, I went to Sete Colli, 20 to 1, 20 to 1, 20 to 1, but nothing faster than that. And that that was the, the period, the hardest of my life when you're chasing for something that you just can't achieve and is tough for your mental, but also gives you the motivation probably to prove that you can do better. Looking to host your first swim meet or replacing an old timing system? Run a swim meet with ease from your laptop using superior swim timing. You can use superior swim timing with your existing equipment or they can provide you with a complete timing solution including deck harnesses, buttons and starter. 
SST is fully compatible with HiTech and Team Unify, as well as Colorado, Daktronics, and Amiga touchpads. Go to superiorswimtiming.com to learn more and be sure to tell them I sent you. And then I got an invitation here uh, in Germany. It's uh, Coach uh, Luther Jones. He mm -hmm. was CEO of the Smart Pedals company in the past. The right. Past. Yeah. Mm. The, the, what part the, of Germany is it? Uh, this is uh, Saarbrücken. It's close to France. It's uh, two hours from Paris. Mm. What's so the name of the team? Uh, it's just no team here. It's just Saarbrücken Olympic School. Oh, okay. like that. There's okay. no team at all here. And I'm training him just face to face right now. Mm. Because uh, he was giving some advices to the kids, but now here the Olympic school decided that they don't want to have kids with us together. I mean, some poli political issues here, mm. uh, but it's good for me, you know. I'm, I have my like pool full availability of the pool, full availability of the gym. I have my dorm here, nothing else that uh, more I needed, you know. What was the um, competition that you swam at last week? Uh, it was just German regional competitions that I came just to test myself. Uh, first, first start of the season, well, under under the load and surprisingly went fast in the free in, in the fly twenty three forty seven. I mean, twenty strokes, nothing, no explosivity, explosivity at all. But also a good sign for freestyle in this year. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was just not a single day of the heavy lifting gym. So we're just starting it now and I feel that we could do something beautiful in the world champs. Nice. Is the shoulder now fully healed again? Yeah, the shoulder full, fully healed and my freestyle getting better and I could just swim without uh, any kind of worries about the training sessions. Like I can go all out and then next day I can go all out and without any, any problems. I'm, I'm let, let's talk about some specific events then you know going back i, I want to talk about the olympics in 16 because mm -hmm. I, I noticed some things that i want to talk to you about i also want to touch on the world record and kind of dig into that a little bit as well mm -hmm. um so just in terms of 16 uh, this doesn't happen very often to me but i walked into the warm-up pool there was there was a beautiful warm-up pool remember that where it was kind of away from i bet you walked in there and it was gorgeous I remember right. walking in one day and I was, I was headed towards the blocks. And as I was walking towards the blocks, you were actually on the block and you were doing a dive. I believe it was a 25 or a 35, one, one of the two, 25 or 35. And I remember as I was walking towards the block, just coming in for the first time, seeing you on the block, seeing Ari with his watches and he hits the, he whistles, you know, go, you come off the block, you hit this beautiful entry, you hit this incredible underwater and then you come out and you're like floating on top of the water i'd never seen anybody swim as fast as you swam in that particular moment right there and then it was like incredible to me you were swimming freestyle and you were swimming so fast and i remember thinking to myself i didn't tell anybody i, I, I didn't tell bruno this i didn't tell anybody else this i thought to myself that guy's gonna win the gold medal I mean, this is how I felt, honestly. I, I saw you swim, and, and I've seen a lot of people swim very fast. You, in that warm-up pool right there, you did something I'd never seen before. It was incredible. Do you remember that moment? I really know what you're talking about. And that's also made make me so, like, depressed while, while I lost it. And that moment, it was three days before the Olympic uh, starts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm doing this race. It was 45 race. Oh, no, mm -hmm. it was 35 race. And then Sorry. I just go, yeah, it was 35 max plus 15 easy. Right. I swam 21.9 that time. And 15 easy completely dropped. Uh, I swam, I think, 14.1 mm. ahead mm. in that moment. Or, so, or I don't remember, I really exactly remember the time. But we calculated that if I just could keep the speed till the end, it would be 20.8. And just this yes moment. that's what i mean i saw it I was, I was, i'm like i've never seen anybody swim that fast on top of the water before it was incredible and in this moment i just felt look i have so much behind this we, we made the great work I, I never felt as good in, as in my life never but in the morning olympics you know olympics is different because you're just so stressed mm -hmm. because you put all your life there 
and I pressed too hard. I pressed too hard in the morning. I pressed too hard in the semifinal, and I pressed even harder in the final. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was just a mistake of the mental preparation that I have only one bullet, and it was all in there. I spent so much energy in the morning, as, and uh, also when you swimming too fast, you don't you don't feel this um, motivational energy later. You know, you're just spinning all the energy out. Mm. That's another mistake. And another point that after this 50, uh, after this 35 plus 15, I just couldn't move my arm the next day. <laughs> that mm -hmm. was the problem. And we, oh. uh, I started to take anti-inflammatories, anti-inflammatories. And you know, sometimes they just take in also something from you if you mm. just take it before the race. Mm. And I, I don't like to say that, oh, excuse, that was the excuse. My, I think it's my excuse was just that just because I couldn't do properly the races I should done. Uh, I couldn't manage my stress, but that's what's all about the Olympics, you know. That's right. why I believe that um, Olympics is just, it's a competition, it's against people. And it, of course, against yourself, you have your own, you have your own uh, lane line, but mm -hmm. why, why were I doing it much faster in the swimming pool alone with the warm-up pool? I couldn't make it later, you know, just yeah. because of the mental, men, mental stress. Talk to me about that then. That's interesting. I appreciate your honesty with that because it's true. It's real. And believe me, I've been there myself. I swam in the 50 freestyle final and I felt at that time in 2004, I pressed too hard. You said I pressed too hard. And that's an interesting word because I, I use it myself. You press too hard. What does it actually mean uh, for somebody that doesn't fully understand sprinting? What does it mean when you press too hard? I believe that when you're training, when you're training hard and you it's all about the sprints and 90 uh, percent of your work is uh, or lactate or narrow or jumps or something uh, your body really knows what to do and you just needed to let it go till the moment you know like you let it go easy and you push later you know you just push a little bit later not in the first 25 right or, and that's what I've done. I've done really, really like hard work in first 10 strokes. Like I press as much as I can. And when you have this adrenaline coming, it's just uh, like Ferrari on the ice. It's something that's um, let you using your power in the wrong, wrong directions, using your muscles in the wrong impulses that you used to train. And it's you, you said a Ferrari. The... You said a Ferrari on ice. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Ferrari on ice. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a that's, good. That's a good way to think about. I've never thought of it that way before. That, that's um, spinning. That's spinning. You're not catching enough water. You know the way I think of it too. Sometimes, uh, you know, people can relate to this a little bit. You know, when you play golf, sometimes when you play golf, you want to hit the ball as far as you can, right? That's the goal. Is hit the ball straight. Hit the ball as far as you can. And sometimes you squeeze the golf club a little too hard. Sometimes you swing a little too hard and you come down and you want to hit that golf ball as hard as you can so that it will go as far as you can. And what happens? It goes, whew, goes right or it goes left. It, you, you hook it or you slice it because you're trying too hard. And then sometimes when you just relax on the golf club and you let the swing come and you hit and then you hear that clean like pop and then the ball just flies in the direction you want it to go. That's a very similar feeling, but I like the description you gave, like a Ferrari on ice. I think that's really good. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, I felt it so often, like mostly now when when I lost the sensation of uh, swimming freestyle, and I'm working hard to getting it back. And pretty often, I'm feeling being on Ferrari. I have the great engine. I have a lot of like energy, but I'm just on ice, mm -hmm. and I want to move it from ice to some, like let's say sticky drag racing road mm. that's mm. what i want to have mm. and that's all about and now um because you know also like just a little bit flashbacks i had so much support after i broke the war record like some people supports me so much with money and invest in me just to give me better better results but mm. it doesn't work for me i had m more money than ever in my life in the war in the worst results in my life in that time where i just uh, mm. made so much money and now I have almost nothing. I had just like after you just screw out your Olympics, nobody really cares. Yeah. But that's what the reality comes, and that's you really start to enjoy. And I'm just here. I don't own anyone, any kind of like I don't care about anyone else now. 
just cares how I feel in the water. I cares right. how hard I work. Right. That's right. the period of the being professional. Now, so. Right. You don't feel like you owe anybody anything now. Like, you know, you, you felt responsible almost before of like, I have to get this result because people are investing in me. Now it's yeah. like, no one's investing in me. I'm doing it for myself. Yeah. That, that's exactly feeling the thing. Yeah. Like yeah. Oh. Your, 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 sorry. Sorry. But your personal best is 2207, right? 2207. Yeah. So I just have this personal question that you always try to break 22. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. When, when you decided to quit, like what, what's, what was your final thing to quit? Final thing to quit was, listen, I was 31 years old and back, uh, back in 2006, let's say there wasn't a lot of older swimmers. I was, I was at 31. I was one of the oldest. I already had two kids. You, you have a kid yourself. So you understand when you're a father, things change. I had two kids. I was 31. All I had ever done is swum. I hadn't finished my degree. I know I didn't finish my college degree. So I felt like I was at a point in my life where I was like, I have no injuries. I've made it to two Olympics. Uh, I've made the final at the Olympics. Um, I, I also got to a point where I kind of realized myself, I wasn't Gary Hall Jr. I wasn't Alexander Popoff. You know, I wasn't Michael Klim. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't that person. I was very good. Don't get me wrong. I was very, very good. And I believed in myself and I worked very hard, but I wasn't Alex Popoff. I just knew it, you know? So I got to the age of 31 and I just said to myself, look, you, you've tried to break 22 for the past six years and you came close, but you didn't get it. And, and it's okay. You know, I, I came to the realization it's okay. You don't have to, you can live with yourself knowing that you made the final of the Olympics, that you're one of the fastest swimmers in the world. The 21 is not going to change anything. I would have loved to get 21, believe me. And I think uh, on occasions I tried too hard. I was the Ferrari on ice because I wanted 21 so badly. Um, I also look back now and I think, well, if I had have been training a little differently and if I had have been doing I'm some things. On four, man. If I, if I had have coached myself, if, if I could coach myself now, you know, the, the guy I am now, what I know to who I was as a swimmer then, I would have swum a little bit faster for sure. But look, th those things are, th it is what it is at the time. So basically what I'm saying is I was just ready to move on with my life. It wasn't, I wasn't obsessed with the 21, but I think I, I could have got there for sure. But, you know, I was happy with where I was at, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, you've done everything for that. Yeah, so, I'd done everything. Everything I could possibly a, do at the time. At everything the time. I knew, everything I knew at the time, I did everything I could possibly do. I, I think that's the thing. Like, uh, I, I knew that now, like I did even not at 50% in the last two years for my result. Mm. And that, that's what is important. Before you thinking about quitting, ask yourself, did you done everything for your goal, for your dream, for your passion? Mm. Mm. I said, no, 50, 50 butterfly. Yes. is something that I'm proud of. And, uh, being the fastest human in butterfly, even like now, I believe that I can be even faster just uh, improving my first 15 because my first 15 is 530 no 527 was exactly in that world record mm. so and and that time Ben proud did like something five zero or mm. and i still believe that i can do it and huge motivations now destro swim towers gain strength in the water with a tower of power save $150 per double swim tower by using code BRETT, B-R-E-T-T, -T, at checkout, destromachines.com. Talk to me about that race then specifically, because uh, in the lead up to it, I, I was there in your training camp. I was seeing the things that you were doing. Um, you were doing some interesting things in training in the lead up to that. Uh, very short sprints, a lot of very short sprints, a lot of heavy lifting but um not full range of motion type lifting like squatting you were only squat like quarter squats mm -hmm. but very very heavy extremely heavy things like this uh, is there anything i'm missing talk to me about your training back then uh, this is an interesting point about the uh, lift uh, so the the idea of lifting anything or power clean uh, also i'm not doing power clean i'm doing muscle clean because i'm not really going under the bar i'm mm. just producing so much power and force that brings into the shoulder you know and uh, this impulse creates the narrow system load. And baby squats, what you're saying, these quarter squats, uh, they are also can load your nervous system, particularly 
without having uh, risks on injury. Because as soon as you go lower or, and deeper in the squats, it's a big risk that you could not control your lower back or something and get some troubles into this. And this is a couple stages on the squats. Uh, the main stage is strength, that you're just grabbing these 200 kilos or how much is 450 or 500 pounds on the back, and you're going slow down as slow as you can without failing, and then you go slow up. You're doing cup for a couple of weeks, like two, three weeks. Then you make it in, into the transition. So you start to going up quick and low, slow. And then you just drop every kind of eccentric parts. So you stop doing eccentric, you put it, put those uh, heavy, heavy weights onto the blocks, onto the wall, uh, like somewhere that it could hold this weight. And then you just press it hard up. So you're not breaking your muscle fibers anymore, but you're still stimulating your nervous system and potentializing it mm. without mm. risks of the injury. Because oh. I tried 90%, like 90 degree squats and deep squats in my history. And every time I do too heavy, um, my, my back is done, you know, and that was an option for being safe and really loading the central nervous system. That's exactly what we're looking for. Wow. And then we move this gym into the quick exercises, like, you know, Kaiser machine, that's mm -hmm. um, the, like uh, the pneumatic, I don't know the exact word in English, but that you have this air resistance that is mm -hmm. constant resistance. Mm -hmm. After you do the like power clean, you move straight to this Kaiser that you move from strength to power exactly to teach your nervous system to create this uh, strength into the power. And then of course, it could be combined with the uh, uh, swimming short sprints. So we do the impulse of nervous system. We develop the, uh, the attachments to the muscles because you know, the nervous system cannot grow, but we can increase the numbers of uh, the attachments to the muscle. And we, we, we improve it there, but then we learn in swimming part. So it's all combination of gym, strength to gym, strength to power, transition, plus transition to the water. Wow. And it's big macro, macro cycle. Wow. Yeah, it was very in interesting. There was also a point where if you weren't ready to be at that maximum velocity power, you didn't swim that day. Is that correct? Uh, uh, yes, always. If, if I felt that something is just mm, that I'm missing out some energy, I just prefer just to touch the water, really particularly touch the water and go back home sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that it wasn't like, well, I'm scheduled to swim. So I'm going to swim. I was like, I'm not ready to swim today. So I'm not swimming. Um, it was interesting. It should be, should be like professional. You, you, you need to really know, is it really helping you or not? It's not a play. It's not a lazy thing. It's like mm -hmm. I had even t-shirt. I'm not lazy. I'm just saving energy. Right. Because and it's taper. Let's say taper, and particularly for fifty, it's uh, always uh, better do the best you can or nothing. It's really like critical. Like you just every time you touch something, it should be better than you did last last time. And right. full energy, full race. So you you just just give your body the setup that. Every time you jump in the water right now, it's going to be max. Mm -hmm. Best speed ever you do. Right. And this is a taper approach. Uh, only concentric exercises, not, not breaking any fibers, just simulate it without like even push ups or muscle ups. You just go up and then you throw it. Mm. Power cleans here and then you throw it. You don't, don't resist because mm. we are swimming. We're never resisting. We're always produ productive. We're always produce. It's all about the production. Wow. So it can potentialize a lot your swimming if you do it in the right moment. Because uh, a lot of people doing heavy lifting, a lot of people doing heavy load, and they keep doing it till till the last moments of the races. Just skipping the eccentric part can help them so much to potentialize their swim because they're not going to break the fibers, but they're going to still stimulate the, the narrow system on the same level as before. Because all the purpose of gym is not grow muscles, it's grow your narrow system to produce. Right. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting. I mean, it, there's not many people training like that in swimming. It was, it was very unique. I felt like, and, um, and, and you were becoming very successful with it. It was something that you had bought into. It was something that you were doing very well. You understood it. Um, and I could tell that your swimming was just kind of hitting at the right moment in the lead up to this world record I'm talking about. 
Um, and so there was also that talk then of like, oh, we're, we're going to break the world record. We're going to break. And so the, the belief then started to generate, the, the, you know, psychologically that that comes into play too, right? Uh, before, like in the morning swim, I swam 20 to 7 with 19 strokes with a two breath without like pushing at all. And day before I swam the 100 fly, uh, <clears throat> I split 23 0, 18 strokes. And you know, I'm not doing 15 meters dives, okay? I'm just mm -hmm. doing four. I did in that moment, I did four kicks. So it was just short underwater, 18 strokes, and 75 meters in that moment, I was faster than the war record. In the hundred fly, but then I died, and I was just decided to just drop it down because, mm. and that I still uh, I tried many times to swim the hundred, but it's a completely different race. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have this production trainings, if you all about the creating as much lactate in your body as you can, uh, probably the hundred is going to be the most difficult part for you, except you know how to do the great underwaters because underwaters can split this lactate production to full body, like to the legs. Hmm. And I swam their personal best in 100 flyers as well. It was still my best 52 1. But <laughs> never again that fast. <laughs> so then talk to me about the final. You you know that you've you've swum the morning very easy, very comfortably. Um, what's then the approach where this all comes together, it all clicks at night? Mm, I knew that I'm gonna break it. I just was not really expecting that it's gonna be that that fast. I thought it's going to be 22, 35, but, and in 50 butterfly, I never push the first 25 and, uh, apply more forces gradually till the end. So that's how, if you see the analysis, it's just, uh, every 10 meters is 4.9 till the end. So I just hold all the speed till the end of the race. And uh, this is a interesting point that people sometimes pressing too hard, they driving Ferrari on ice on the first mm -hmm. 25. Mm -hmm. And then the Ferrari is not Ferrari anymore, you know. And I really, I think those moments when I touched the, the wall and one of the live dreams happened was one of my favorite moments of life. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the best drug that holds me to swim now and it's the best drug that honestly exists in my life. And this is a magic, you know, this is a magic period of my life. and. I'm happy that I achieved that and I touched something that no one did in the world this time, you know, and being human being like the fastest human in butterfly because it's the shortest event, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a lot, a lot allowed me to say that I'm the fastest human swimming butterfly in the world. And still, because I know that the Dressel doing 100 fly world record, but I still doing this 50 that he it was the only one record he didn't break now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, and uh, Nick Santos has, hasn't been able to get that one either. And, and he's an incredible athlete. Yeah. Ben Proud, he hasn't come close to that either. So I mean, it, it, look, it's an incredible swim. And like you said, it's a, it's a moment that we share together because I was in the stands with your coach. There was a talk of you were feeling very good. The, the chances of you breaking the world record were very high. I could feel the energy. I could feel the um, belief. And, and I could see your focus behind the block. So I knew like, this is, this is the moment that, you know, there's, there's moments that come along, very special moments. I had a very special moment with uh, Cesar Cielo. Um, and this was a, uh, not my moment, but it was, I was part of it. And, and uh, I'm on the video and then, and I'm screaming at you. I'm, I'm, I'm willing you to go. I felt like I was connected to you in the swim uh, as you were swimming. And the video shows that we are connected for life in this video, man, because, um, Look, it's a special moment for me, man. It, it brings up emotions for me because I was witnessing you do something that has never been done before. It was, it was a beautiful moment, man. Man, thank you for also the, those cheering. I still, I still really, I still feeling it again and again together mm. with you. And, uh, and then I remember you came also and you were happy to see it because, you know, mm. sometimes it's just not all the people ready to, um, share it together with you like honestly mm -hmm. sometimes the oh the world record is good like i don't mm -hmm. really care but you really care you really mm -hmm. felt that it's you was part of the race mm -hmm. and yeah 
everything, yeah. like every time yeah. I watch it, only that type of video because it's many footages around, but only this one is my favorite. Yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. There were moments backstage where it's not on video, but we, we, yeah, I mean, I was so happy for you, man. And, and in a way, kind of like where you asked me, you know, how do you feel about never breaking 22? You got so close. When I see you do something like that, it's almost like I get some pleasure because you did something I could never do, you know? And so I, I do, if it's a genuine love, it's a genuine like happiness. It's like, man, this guy achieved something in his life that is going to be with him forever. And, it, and it's a proud moment for you and your family and, and coaches. I mean, oh my God, it's just incredible. So anyway, it, look, it was a great moment, but you know, maybe, maybe, um, Swim Angel Fish is an online certification program that strengthens your teaching curriculum to serve swimmers of all abilities. Swim Angel Fish will prepare you and your instructors with the skills to teach swimmers with autism, physical disabilities, anxiety, sensory and motor conditions, and more. Learn to teach skills faster and with more comfort with Swim Angel Fish. Apply for an only alpha pool product scholarship and receive up to 50% off your certification. Go to swimangelfish.com today to apply. I don't know. You can be honest with me here. Maybe some of the criticism beyond this after this is it's a very difficult thing to deal with being a world record holder. And some of the things that I've heard, I don't know if it's accurate, but some of the things I may have heard is like it changed you a little bit. I mean, it, it you looked at yourself a little bit differently, maybe – maybe the things that you were willing to do before you got there to do that. I don't know. This is just some criticisms I've heard. I've never broken a world record. I don't know how it would change me. Do you feel it changed you positively and negatively as well? Uh, I believe that, of course, every time you achieve something, it will change you. We're always changing, honestly, the life experience. If you're not changing yourself, you're just probably uh, just stupid because everything is experience if everything is happening in your life is just experience and we're always trying to change better right mm -hmm. and um of course after those moments i've changed as um, losing like part of my main goal like let's say it was all mm -hmm. about this and then i changed them the energy transfers somewhere else mm -hmm. But in negative approach, I don't know, like some people maybe say, but I've never been a star, you know, I've never been cocky. I'm always free to talk to people uh, and I never catch that. So I, I believe that probably some personal relationships changed with some people, of course, mm. uh, but not really particularly me changing because of the result. Okay. I start to All be right. proud of myself more, but right. nothing particularly big. Okay. All right. That, that, that clears it up. I mean, I understand that. Yeah. And, and it's a, it's a good answer too, in terms of, like you said, something like that is going to change you, you know, it's going to happen, but, um, that's, it's interesting. So, well now, okay. So, so now you're, you're back, you're, you're healthy. Um, training is not still ideal, but it's getting better. Um, where, where are you headed this year? What are the goals for this year? What are you, what are you aiming at? Uh, first, honestly, I want to break 22 in the 50 fly. Uh, same goals, different stroke. Really? Oh, you want to break 22? Yeah. I mean, if, if of course, or when, when I'm going to reach the same speed as I've been done before and I know how to reach it, uh, it's possible. And uh, the thing is, it's all about my first 15 meters. Uh, last World Champs, when I was struggling with my health, I swam 22.87 in the final. I've lost a dressel. 056 at first 15. I mean, mm. this significant amount of time. <laughs> and mm. I really respect his underwaters, man. I'm, I'm searching for getting it done as good as him because uh, it's a huge amount of work. He's very explosive and he can apply these forces underwater. I think this is the key how to break all the records. That's how, what he's doing. Mm. Because not, <clears throat> and this is cultural thing. Me being swimmer, I was always thinking how to swim, not how to do underwaters. Never, never in my life I were focused so much. And with that speed that, that I have, and even now showing that 2347 without any preparations and not even dying on this race, I believe that I'm at the stage now with all the experience I've got and the people that surrounds me and the new stage that I don't have any responsibility except me to me. Mm. I could, I could chase for that. 
and uh, dream high and as higher as your dream is closer you're gonna get and as close as i get at least my personal best and 50 fly could be nice as well so so the world the world championships then um that, that's kind of are you gonna swim the fly and the freestyle yeah fly and, uh i got already the a cut for 50 oh. fly i hope my federation will accept me anyway uh -huh. uh, the 50 freestyle also i i have a cut in 50 freestyle and set the quality 20 to 1 uh, but i don't know the rules now because we uh we have the new national coach he's from malta uh, i mean he's ukrainian that was working the head coach of malta in past mm. and um so far things going good and i would like to also perform in freestyle and i really enjoyed those moments that you were seeing something that I was not believing. I still not believing that it happened to my life. That mm. was this 35 that fast, mm -hmm. that felt that good. Maybe some currency in the pool. Who knows? No, 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 no. It was, it was, it was you at the time. I mean, it was, it was incredible. Like, there's no current. There's none. It was no magic. It was just you and how you were swimming. You have that talent. You are, you are an exceptional talent. But, everyone in fight in final exceptional man everyone. no look look there there are look listen man i'm telling you here's what i'm saying to you is there are good swimmers at the olympic games let's say at, at the olympic games there there are a lot of good swimmers but then there are the exceptional talents and that's what i'm talking about i was a very good swimmer i was one of the world's best swimmers i'm telling you but i was not gary hall jr i was not alex popov and what I'm saying to you is you are an exceptional talent. You are as good as Caleb Dressel. You are as good as Flo Manadu. You're you're in that category. You're you're as good as Bruno Fratis. The guys that are winning medals at the Olympics, that's you, man. You're right there. That I've seen you swim. You are an exceptional talent. Yeah, thank you for this words. It motivates me to to chase the goal because um yeah, in the moments when you're really uh, missing the speed for a while, you know, mm -hmm. and every time you swim, you know that it's not there. Every time mm -hmm. you do some drill that should allow you to swim, it's not there. And you're telling every time to the coach, like no matter who is that, and the coach starts to struggle with that because when you repeat and repeat to the coach, look, man, I don't feel that. I don't feel mm -hmm. like let's do something with it. I don't feel that. Mm -hmm. And it's not about uh, discipline. It's not about energy. It's not about trust. It's just about what's happening. Mm -hmm. so and sometimes the path is so tricky mm -hmm. and that's what about the exceptional i think I, i've done exceptional work in that time right and that that was the the, the the moment that was the exceptional work that sometimes i was swimming like they said this uh, three twenty fives in a row in uh, like 15 seconds rest between and after the first one you feel that you you're risking to die that your heart is popping out or something you feel dizzy and your stomach is cramping after the first 25 and then you find the power to just push it again and not saving a little thing because if you're gonna save you know that you're not gonna improve mm -hmm. and in those moments you grow in those moments when you're close to death maybe it's not death but at least it's the sensation of being somewhere really above your limits, really above the things that keep you healthy. So you really force your body and mind to go somewhere that it's blocked. And if you do this a couple of times, then you, you have a chance to go even farther. And, and that, that's what brings you to this, to the stages of freestyle fast. Butterfly mm -hmm. is a different game. Butterfly, I feel I'm talented for butterfly and uh last year i've been i was surprised that i'm the best in the world last year i don't i know that not many competitions 50 fly last year would be right but i yeah. hold the top one ranking i was not doing a single stroke of butterfly last year not even 25. Mm. the only one i've done it was the isl racing then i was not touching it in in the any kind of preparation phase so i went to the europeans i swam 25 meters day before the race starts and then i raced in 22 9. so i know that it's there but my you see goal, man that's what i'm talking about man that's an exceptional talent man but it's about the butterfly freestyle i'm agree in butterfly something something happening with me that if i'm in shape i just i just know how to swim very fast right 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 and uh, it's it's all about the water and uh, and 
making some like making this 21 it's only possible with the great 15 because all those guys who is now short yeah. course nick santos best underwater ever i mean looking how he's doing that he's doing it also explosive gym stuff and mm. he's uh, m- making a crazy ankle work underwater and great positioning that yeah. was always tough for me but i'm learning i'm trying my best you know mm. if i could manage this probably 50 flyer if I do 21, I think no, no one going to be close anymore. Ever. No, no. If you got 21, that's that's scary good. I mean, the 22, two already is is sick, you know. But uh, no, Dressel 22, 35, and but I've watched his race. I'm not sure that it's possible for him to do it faster. Close, but not faster. And, and my my own vision, you know, my subjective vision. Yeah. I can be mistaken, of course. But well, he, the world the championships will be. World championships will be fun then, you know. We'll uh, we'll get to see head to head. I would like to. I would like to because yeah. uh, those races are interesting, you know. When exceptional, because I'm not exceptional in hundred fly. I don't have this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, skills for that, but fifty is my field, and I still was never been a world world champion yet. Well, listen, man, I'm going to be at the World Championship, so maybe I'll be in the stands again. We can have another moment together, you know, and uh, that would be yeah. cool. You're going to see it. You know, you're going to see it in advance. Yeah. I think you will You will find the, the mood. But also, I don't want to, I don't want to, let's say, put the result before it's happening. It's just my yeah. dream. It's, yeah, my, yeah. It's, it's, it's my goals. It's my dream. They're high. Sure. They're really, uh, but without putting the goal high, why, yeah. why did even go to the pool, you know? Yeah. And I still yeah, want well, to be fast and freestyle. I want to get back my speed and be consistent on it. Yeah. Well, you got work to do. So uh, in the next few months, do the work. Um, I'm, I'm always here if you need me privately. You know, uh, hit me up, man. Fan. But uh, I'm a fan. And look, you know, you know how I feel about you. You're, you're awesome. So keep it going, man. I look forward to seeing you in person again. And thanks for sharing this today. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. I enjoyed to All talk right. to you. All right, man. Take care. Bye. Event heat lane name of swimmer times and places it's called swim nerd live and it allows the data and times from your actual scoreboard to be broadcast and viewed in real time on any smart tv phone or other device there are so many things you can do with this software a very simple and easy to use necessity for any team or facility that is live streaming their meets results one click on any device and they're watching your swim meet live in real time Go to swimpractice.com to learn more.